The question was, I gave you two fixed points. Two fixed points. Uh, I think they were the trees, right? And then I said, I would like you to position yourself such that you are twice as far from one fixed point, one tree, as the other. Twice as far from one as the other. And because that's something which you don't have like a, an inbuilt geometric definition for, you're like, what on earth is that shape? We really struggled to come up with that shape. And so here is where, while algebra can be somewhat tedious at times, you gain insight that you can't just get by intuition. Uh, and then once you can replace with intuition, then you don't need to worry so much about the algebra. So I've just picked out a couple of points. This is the point we've been continually using this morning, just because, why not? Uh, and this is another point which I've chosen carefully. Uh, I'll let you have a think about as we go through why I've chosen the particular point that I have. And then lastly, what's this guy again? This guy's very important to this topic. This guy is a, it's a point that moves. It's a point that can change its coordinates so long as it keeps on adhering to the, the geometric rule or definition or property that I've provided, okay? So, if I want the distance to A to be twice as far as the distance to B, then how would I state that in an equation? What would I actually write? Distance B times 2 and the distance A. Okay, so I could say distance B times 2 equals distance A. That would be fine. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I should point out that while that's totally okay, at the moment, it's slightly ambiguous because like, well, distance from B to, to, to what, right? Um, distance from B to A, would that make sense? That's a fixed distance. So using the notation I already have, what could I say instead, which would mean the same, but, <coughs> excuse me, would be unambiguous as to what's going on. Michael? Is it like 2BP equals AP? 2BP equals AP. What do you think? These say the same thing, don't they? So neither is better than the other. But seeing as I've named P the moving point, I might as well use that name. Okay, now these are both distances between two points. We're very good at doing the distances between two points. So let's go ahead and actually start to work out what these numbers are going to look like. I'm going to need a bit more board space, so I'm going to start at the top. I begin with a 2. And then here comes this big square root, right? So what's underneath the square root? You tell me. X, x plus 2 because of the double negative squared and then plus y plus 3 squared again because of the double negative Are you happy with that so there's the left hand side that's 2 times bp on the right hand alternatively we have the same deal but my numbers are just ever so slightly different okay so you go ahead you chuck your square root in what's this x minus yeah Doing okay right now? So all I've done is I've taken the geometric de definition and put algebra underneath it, okay? But now, this is the power of algebra, right? You don't know what these things are, but you can still work with them. When you see these square roots, what is your instinct? Square, and get rid of them, okay? Now we will do exactly that, but just be cautious. There's not just square roots on both sides. This guy's also hanging around, and if you square everything, you're gonna square him as well. So on the left hand side, I think I'm going to get this. I suppose I could have just written the 4 all the way out the front and then put big chunky brackets, but I'm going to need to do some expansion in a minute, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Okay. Over on the right hand side, we get this, sans the square root sign. Okay, now have a look. Think before you write. What's the best way to go next in order to simplify this? What's the most efficient way? Minus the 4 bracket 1 plus 3 to the right side. And then okay. the next one is Fantastic. So we are going to have to do some expansion shortly. But let's do things before we expand because expanding always makes things messier. And you can see I already have this like term on both sides. I might as well deal with that first. When you have a look at the x's, mm, you're going to have to expand those. In some ways, they're kind of unlike terms, aren't they? Okay. So I am going to expand those. These are the two things I'm going to do. I'm going to collect like terms with these guys, and then I'm going to begin expanding my x terms. Okay. So can you help me out? 4 times, what's in the brackets? x squared plus 4x plus 4. Looks okay. 
Um, over on the left hand side over here, I think I'm going to, I'll subtract a y plus 3 all squared, I can avoid negatives. So that leaves me with three of them over here. So far so good? And in the same way, I'm going to start to expand the remaining terms on the right hand side. That gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. Now this looks messy, but it's not impossible to deal with. Okay. So have a look. You can see how many x terms I have over here. And you can see they're going to collect with some of the x terms over here. right? Um, how many x squared terms do I have? I have four here and I have one there. So when I subtract and balance things out, I'm going to end up with how many on this side? Three. How many x to the one terms do I currently have on the left-hand side? I have 16 of them. And then there's negative 2 over there. So when I balance things out and I add 2x to both sides, I'll end up with 18x. And then lastly, 4 times 4, again, 16. What's going to happen? 15 after I minus 1. Okay, uh, And then you've got this guy still kicking around. And there is nothing left on the right-hand side. OK, I'm going to ask the question again. There's a bunch of things I could do. What makes the most sense to get to the simplest path most efficiently? Eric? That's convenient, isn't it? It's almost as if someone picked these numbers so they would be nice and convenient. Everything's a multiple of 3, so I'm going to divide these through. That leaves me with this, 5. Oops, that's gone now. OK. Now, again, pause for a moment. Think. We've been doing algebra. We haven't been doing it mindlessly, but we've just been doing, we've just been thinking about this algebraically, right? We haven't really thought about the fact that, hey, remember, this came all the way from shapes through geometry, through coordinate geometry. Now we're in locus. So we have this great, you know, foundation of knowledge that we ought to be drawing on, but we've just been thinking algebra right now. So think again. What does this thing look like? What do you, what do you predict this is going to be? This looks to me like it's going to be a circle, right? The x squared and the y squared is kind of the smoking gun that tells you that. Okay. So therefore, even though I can factorize this as it is, like these, these guys over here, I can factorize that, you can factorize that, but I don't want to. There's something else I should do to these rather than just factorize it as it is. What should I do? If it's a circle, I should complete the square, shouldn't I? Um, x plus 1, x plus 5 is no use to me, besides the fact that I'm expecting a circle with an actual radius, not a zero radius. So therefore, what do I add to both sides to complete the square? To know what you want over here, to know what you want, you need to halve this and square it. That should be 9. I already have 5. So what should I add? 4 will get me there, right? x squared plus 6x plus 9. This is already completed. You added 4 to the left, so you should add 4 to the right. Looking good so far? All right, I'm pretty much there. So I'm going to even write that as 2 squared. OK. Does this match what we were forming outside? Not really, because admittedly, it's not like I gave you any measuring instruments or anything like that. Tell me what this shape is. This is a circle, and what else can you tell me about it? Center is at negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3. Just think about that in relation to these guys before I show you what it looks like. Position where A and B are, then position where the center of this is, and then the radius, of course, is. So, are you ready to see it? Here we go. I only need that part, so that's convenient. There's, uh, what's that one? That's B. That's B. That's A. OK, so here's tree 1 and tree 2. Yeah? Do you remember where you were? Do you remember where you positioned yourselves? Do you remember where Jake and Drew went? You're like, fuck, hipsters, too mainstream to be over here. OK, are you ready to see the circle? There it is. Do you see it? Can you, do you see how it works? You see how every point marvelously follows the pattern that we were thinking about. There was, um, there's the lazy point right there. Do you remember what we were talking about with uh, division of an interval, right? Because look, here's the ratio, 1 to 2. Do you see it? 
And then if you go over to the, <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling it that. If you go, keep going over here to the Jake and Drew spot, can you see how this relates to that? Have a look at the distances. Can you see? From here to here, that's one to two because of course these distances are the same, right? Does that make sense? So in some ways what you've done is you've done an external ratio division, you've gone outside, right? One to two. Uh, and then of course every other spot, because this is perfectly graphed, unlike something I would do by hand, um, if you pick any spot on the locus, it's just it's marvelous, right? Look at this. That is gonna be double that every time. Even when you go to like a weird spot over here, you can go ahead and you can measure from here and you'll get double. Pretty sweet, right? And not what you necessarily expected. Okay, so um, I needed to show you that because it's actually a shape you recognize, just this is not at all the definition you expected, but the algebra shows you it has to be that, right? Um, I often think in maths, maths sort of has a lot of moments where it's like, have you ever watched like a, a, a film or a TV series and there's like some secret character and they wear a mask for a long time or you, their voice is disguised and then like three seasons in you're like, OMG, it's that person who we always thought knew along. Well, the circle was there hiding this whole time and we didn't pick it at all, did we, right? Um, but algebra unmasked it. So we're gonna see more shapes as we go through locus. The idea of locus simply is define a shape in coordinate geometry based on some kind of regular geometric rule, okay?